I got dumped and I drove back by myself. So that drive back was the most lonely drive back that I've ever been on in my life. I never ended up in jail, thankfully. You know, the thing is that obviously giving advice is the worst thing that you can do to anybody. You know, to come from a place, bit of mebata. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to hear that. You never wanted to hear it. Not given the chance to be an actor for such a long time. It's been two years. Hi, this is Sana Farzeen and you're watching India Today and I have with me the producer and director of the Mad Mad Madgao Express. Uh, Kunal, I'll ask you at the trailer launch, you mentioned how this film is a product of rage. Yes. Uh, could you elaborate more on that and how did Madgao Express come to life? Uh, well, like I said, you know, this, this film came to me uh, at a time when I was not in the most happiest spaces in my head and my heart. And I was going through that phase of where I wasn't like, there weren't enough opportunities coming my way and I was let's say, cribbing about the fact that why is this happening and why, yeah. how can this change? And it was at that time that I said that either I can now cry about this or maybe create an opportunity for myself. Uh, and that's how the whole idea of me sitting down and typing these synopsis of yeah. an idea that I had in my head started. And I realized that it was over the next 15 days that I had a kind of a script skeleton with, the, you know, the dhancha of the film was ready. And by then I had kind of mentally moved on from that phase of feeling uh, angry and dark mm -hmm. and all of that. So uh, it was kind of a therapeutic thing for me and, yeah. and, and at the end of it I kind of had something that was productive and I'm so many years later here sitting and talking about this film as a director. Amazing. Why did you pick Excel for your first? I, d I did not. I mean I'm very lucky that they picked me. Uh, I, I was saying this earlier also, I secretly hoped that you know it, it would be great if somebody like an Excel made this yeah. and it was purely because it was it was kind of inspired by Dil Chata in a way, but only Dil Chata had kind of gone wrong mm. in, when, in the intent of writing it. And I think they've done friendship films so well, and I think they've just been known to make, you know, for a lack of a better word, for me at least, otherwise, like they make cool films. Mm. So, like, I think this is a cool film and it yeah. needs a producer like that who understands this. Uh, but I didn't even approach them directly. Uh, it was Rucha, who's a friend of mine, who had kind of read the script, and she started working with Excel. And so she pitched it her. Yeah. And that's how I think I was kind of there in that room talking about this film. Amazing. Pran, tell me of course how cool was it to have an actor come up as a director and writer because you've also done that as actor-director. Uh, how cool was that to see Kunal um, in this? You know, I, I honestly, like, I don't think Kunal and me have interacted that much before yeah. this film started. I mean, I've seen him on screen and I've always found his performances very uh, real, believable, uh, authentic, sincere and he's great at comedy. Um, so when Rucha, our producer, told us that Kunal has this script um, called Madgaon Express that she would like us to read, I was immediately like intrigued and wanting mm -hmm. to know what kind of script he would write. You know, so that's really where it started from. Um, and uh, when I read it, um, it made me laugh out loud. You know, and it's it's absolutely a completely crazy ride yeah. uh, from start to finish, uh, with great characters, great punchlines, great situational comedy, all of that stuff going on. Um, and um, I didn't have any doubt in my mind about whether will he be able to direct this film or not. Mm. You know, um, I, I think his life experience um, as somebody who's been on film sets from the time that I think he was two <laughs> 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 or, or six, you know, however old he is. I mean, that has to account for something. That obviously has taught you something. Yes. And if you are a student of film, even if though you're not directing or writing at that time, but you're observing and kind of taking stuff in, you know what's being asked of you, hmm. you know, and there was there was clarity in in his script, there was clarity in his narration, um, and I was just like, "Yar, desh, tum narrate kar rahe, vesi film bana le. That's that's all. <laughs> that's all one can ask for." And he's he's gone ahead and done that in the most incredible way. So we're very proud of the film and just yeah. very proud of having produced his first film as a director. Yeah. And it's not just Kunal as excel production. Like, what is that thought behind that? You guys back so many new directors, a beat, of course, Reema, Zoya, everyone have done their first film with you. Uh, tell me about that process and how important is it to actually back writers and directors at this stage? Um, you know, honestly, we don't go around look, I mean, it's not something that you go and look for. Yeah. Um, I feel that since we worked with, uh, with Zoya, Reema, uh, Nitya, Nitya, Shujat, um, even uh, Gattu, yeah. you know, there's so many directors who've kind of started off their careers mm. here. I think a lot of younger directors or aspiring directors feel that Excel probably is a place that we can go to. Um, and it's, it's, it's created its own kind of space. 
you know, where, where new writers, new directors feel comfortable to reach out yeah. to excel because they feel maybe they'll get a fair shot at at least being heard, mm. if nothing else. Um, and for me, it's, it's an absolutely amazing thing because cinema is an evolving language. Um, how a younger person sees the world today who's 20 years younger than me sees it very differently yeah. or experiences it very differently from what I experienced. You know, so to hear their voice, to hear, to kind of understand their take on, on love, on friendship, on, on whatever that it is that they want to write about, for me is always, I'm curious about it. Yeah. You know, so it starts from there and it's just, it's worked well for us, so let's not uh, jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kunal, tell me, of course, uh, seeing Avinash and Pratik in such different characters has been a surprise for a lot of people. Uh, tell me about your thoughts and how did the casting process happen? I was very lucky to kind of get all the three of them because, you know, they're all versatile actors. And what sometimes I've faced this as an actor that, you know, you get typecasted. And sometimes even if you're not typecasted, yeah. there is people just see you in a certain way and they feel that he's not right for this part or you know this is not his zone but I just feel that if you're a versatile actor then it's your job to deliver what, what, what is asked out of you as a mm -hmm. performer and what I knew with these three boys is I'd seen their work and I knew they're able actors uh, I just wanted to put them in, in a situation where they've not been mm -hmm. uh, for example like with Pratik even though he's done a lot of humor on stage, uh, we've only seen him as, you know, Harshad Mehta yeah. and Scam. And I knew that before anybody else casts him for a comedy, I should do that. And I wanted an actor who's also a Gujarati to play this Gujarati okay. uh, boy in the film. With Avinash, again, he's somebody who's done so many gangster roles, whether it is, uh, you know, Khaki or Bombay Meri Jaan and even Lela Majnu, all intense yes. parts. I wanted to put him in a mix and he's always been the solo lead in all of them. So I wanted to see how he kind of, you know, mm -hmm. functions with this give and take. Again, with Divyendu, he's done comedy, then, but again, like now, recently, you know, everybody knows him as Munna Bhaiya yeah. and that's the most iconic character that stands out. But not just that, I wanted to bring him back to comedy, but also within comedy, I told him, I said, I want to change you physically also and performance-wise also, I want to pitch, pitch it at a different level. And the fact that they allowed me to do that was enough for me. And I yeah. saw them bring these three characters come to life in the most beautiful way. And were you tempted to cast yourself? In I film? actually wrote this to be in. Uh, <laughs> there was no two doubt, like, there was no doubt about it. I had written Dodo's part with Divyendu's done yeah. for myself. Uh, but when I realized that the, the opportunity of being a director is real, and I can do this, I knew that I could own this in, in a way much bigger than just being a writer, yeah. actor on the film. So I chose to do that and because this is my first film, I did not want to risk it. I didn't want to kind of look at the monitor to see the frame and then go and look in the mirror to see mm -hmm. how I am looking. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy that I chose to do that because it let me enjoy this journey completely. Right. Sure. And referring to the last conversation we were having, Farhan, tell me if you did not have the funds or a production house, would you have gone ahead and pitched your scripts to producers? Um, I 100% would have. I mean, I wanted to make my film. It yeah. just so happened that Ritesh wanted to be making a film. He had, I mean, his... He was working in his family's like, uh, there was a, a, a kitchen appliance business called Marlex. Yeah. You know, that, that's, his, that's his family business and that's where he was working for years. And I don't know why, I mean, he had a certain love for film obviously, but he just decided that, you know, I don't want to do that anymore and, and make films. We went school together yeah. and just a friend heard from, from uh, told me that, listen, I think Ritesh wants to produce. And I'm like, oh cool, let me meet him and speak to him. <laughs> So it just kind of happened, you know, but I mean, obviously, if it wasn't him, I would have gone to other people. I mean, there's a huge possibility that like, Amir would have ended up producing it. You know, if I honestly, of I feel course. that that's, that's probably what would have happened because he was producing yeah. it just in Lagan. Right. You know, so that could have happened. But um, I mean, here we are Amazing. 24 years later. And both your first film have a very deep the Goa connection. Uh, tell me, what is your first memory of Goa? Did you also have that boy's plan that never fructifies like yep. for years? My first memory was that I went to Goa in Mardgaon Express uh, with, uh, but it was a college trip uh, and the plan that they had was very different from the plan that we wanted to kind of execute. But I remember that I kind of got the best of both worlds because we kind of lied to our professor at one point and took off for three hours to kind of do our experience. Yeah. But then I was very happy that I also got to see the other cultural side of it, which you, which as a 17 year old, A, you're not interested in, B, it's not even on your plan of things to do, but you got to experience that. So I had a kind of a fulfilling experience okay. right in my first trip. But Goa has always been some, a place where I've only had fond memories. I've gone there with friends, I've been there on film sets, uh, and I've always had a pleasant experience. Yeah. Farhan? You know, what I find really interesting actually 
is that the Goa part in Dilchata is about 10 minutes long. <laughs> You know what I mean? They just drive down, have one, two scenes yeah. over there, one very profound, <laughs> deep scene, which I mean, I think registered very, very strongly at the fort. Uh, and then they sing some more and then they come back, <laughs> right? But I, it's amazing to me how that little uh, event in the film, you know, just captured so many people's imagination. And everyone, when they talk about road film, Dilchata is not a road film at all. Yeah, they just drove down to go and came back and that was it. And that was one song, you know, but they call it a road film. They're like this film about Goa. Um, I don't know what it is about that. It's difficult for me to explain. You know, I just think it captured in that thing a certain exuberance of youth. Mm. You know, and a certain that, listen, let's just go in the moment. You know what I mean? Like, if you yeah. can, because plans never materialize. When you make plans with your friends, the chances that they materialize <laughs> are about 2%. <laughs> right? But if you just say, let's go now, yeah. it, it, there's 90% chance that, that things will happen. So I think it just captured that kind of invincibility, yeah. the exuberance. The, I don't know, just that of friendship and that, that stayed with people. But any mad memories that you have? I have but many mad any memories of Goa, but uh, that's for another time. <laughs> <laughs> but what has been the And another kind of show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but a trip that has gone wrong, have you guys have had that? Oh, I mean, not horribly wrong like Madgaon okay. Express. But I think every trip doesn't actually go uh, like how it's planned, right? Like every yeah. trip has its kind of uppers and downers. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, but like nothing that's gone horribly wrong. I never ended up in jail, thankfully. <laughs> Farhan, you've been a nice traveller. Um, I, th I think probably the most horribly wrong was on one of my trips to Goa. Um, the, some girl that I was dating at that time, uh, she dumped me while we were in Goa. Oh. Yeah, so actually that's where that I took that whole just, safe thing from. Yeah. You know what I mean? That because I got dumped and I drove back by myself. <laughs> so that drive back was the most lonely drive back <laughs> that I've ever been on in my life. The thing is yeah. wrong. You know when you're going like you're like with somebody else and yeah. you're like, like man, you feel like so like cool, me, my girlfriend on the road. <laughs> you know, and then you're coming back, your playlist is different. <laughs> yeah, so that to me was it's a very memorable uh, drive back. Kunal, a friend <laughs> just told me that Kunal can just post his thirst traps and his films would Promote like he can so, promote wow. it to that. What's with this sudden thirst traps on Instagram? I've recently <laughs> learned about that word because I had no idea what that meant. But that's been there for because I've not been I've not given the chance to be an actor for such a long time. It's been two years, so that's me trying to also kind of put the image. They say I'm not given up on acting. I'm still there. <laughs> and Farhan, everyone's waiting for you to see you on screen. Like what's keeping you away from it? Of course. The direction part is happening, but when are yeah, we seeing yeah. you act also? Um, so, I will be starring a film in July of this year, which uh, we will make an announcement for yeah. pretty soon. I'm very excited. It has been a long gap. I haven't done a film since Tufan, actually. Yeah. It has been long, but uh, I mean, I was uh, in the midst of prepping for Gilles Zara, as you know, but then that got postponed. And so many things have kind of played a role mm -hmm. in not being able to do it. But now, this July, I get started, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, Kunal, because you're directing now, if you yeah. had to cast Farhan for a film, what genre would you pick? I would actually want to do a road trip film again with them because okay. I, I, because I'm selfishly because there are so many things that I have kind of you know it's Vyori said that it's, he's right the Goa thing is is not like a big part of that film but I just feel that in that one song it was like you know वो एक पल में ज़िंदगी जीने वाली बात होती है you it just stands out like parallel to the whole film yeah. uh, so I'm just saying just for that sure insight of what it is like and I would love to gauge his energy and definitely do something in humour with him mm -hmm. because I see that he's got a wicked sense of humour. I don't know, have you ever done comedy? Or? Only in ZNMD. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. 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 So they are, they're comedy. Uh, and if you guys both had to pick, pick one like uh, maybe underrated performance of each other, what would that be? An underrated performance? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh God. Uh, I think he's got love for like everything he's done. Luck by chance maybe. The judges as a film, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's so luck by chance. But I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I can say underrated performance. I'll tell you a film that I loved him in, and I wish that more people had seen it. I actually, a lot of people did see it, but yeah. I wish more people had seen it. Was Loot Case. Right. He was amazing in that film. Thank you. You know, and um, did that release only on uh, yeah, streaming? Yeah. Uh, it released only on streaming. I wish that was a theatrical film, actually. Right. Because it was it was absolutely amazing, and I don't know. I mean, like, and because it's difficult to gauge how many people watch yeah. Yeah. on streaming and stuff. But uh, that to me was amazing. Uh, and Kunal, will you do that again? Like, how fun was it directing? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I loved being on set. I loved even the pre-production bit of it because as an actor, you just are on set. Uh, but you know, there is this team that you interact with that I had not interacted with. Uh, you know, you have your ED team, you have your production team, you have your, and then every single day it's like you're prepping for battle. 
Yeah. Uh, because one, you know, the meter will start ticking the day you go on production, right? On that date. And you don't want to waste anybody's time. You don't want to waste anybody's money. I really enjoyed the entire process of it. And then again, to post-production, you know, sitting in that dark room, watching that footage over and over again, losing objectivity yeah. at some point, then having to distance. So I think it was a great fun experience. It was a great learning experience. And it's also, I think, going to help me not just as a writer, director, but also as an actor. Yeah. For sure. Uh, and lastly, it's said that Jack of all trades, master of none, but you both have just proved it wrong. Uh, tell me about that experience. Is it Does it get tough to kind of be Jack of all trades? Yeah, I, honestly, I don't think about it only. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I guess, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for him. But as long as you're enjoying what you're doing, yeah. I think that's all that matters, yeah. you know. Um, like they say, right? like you do what you love, you, you never work a day in your life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's that's really what it is. So whether it's... Producing, whether it's directing, acting, doing but music. But it comes naturally, like. It's the, I don't know about naturally or not. I mean, you have to like keep studying. Mm. You know, you have to keep yeah. learning and wanting to improve yourself. The minute you feel that you know, like now I know what yeah. there is to know. I mean, that's the first sign that you're uh, on the way down. Yeah. You know, so yeah. um, you have to. I mean, just keep your ear on the ground, keep experiencing things, and and trying to improve yourself. Absolutely. The more knowledge you have about things, the more you prepare yourself whether it's for acting or whether it's for singing, mm. right. you know, that will help you eventually yeah. when you go on the stage to perform or on the set to act. So that you have to do that homework, right. you know, Absolutely. creating a strong foundation, yeah. you can't stop doing that. I think you're always going to be a student uh, of everything. Like, just because I've made this film doesn't mean, look, I, now I know how to make mm. films. Every new film is going to be in a new fight. And like every fighter, you have to prep for it. Like, it's the most important fight yeah. of your life. Uh, but when it comes to jack of all trades, I think it's a calling. If you have an interest to something, there's one life, you got to explore it. Yeah. Pretty soon you'll know whether you're good at it or not. But keeping that aside, whether you're enjoying it or not. Mm -hmm. And if you're enjoying it, you got to just be courage courageous right. enough to kind of keep doing it yeah. and see whether there'll be a take. So you may not be a jack of all, master of one, but you may be jack of all, master of some. some.